This meeting of the Board of School Commissioners will come to order at this time. And uh, I would like to ask that uh, Mr. Stringfellow lead us in the prayer and the pledge. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to thee tonight and we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us and our school system. Our Heavenly Father, we ask for your protection and for our superintendent and his staff and our principals and teachers and all of the children in Mobile County as we prepare for the opening of school. Please make sure they're safe and we are ready to begin. We also ask our Heavenly Father that you uh, protect our first responders who are always there for us in our greatest need uh, as we need them. And we ask also for thy guidance and wisdom and patience as we conduct the business of our school system tonight. We pray for these things in thy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Okay, uh, do I hear a motion for the approval of the minutes? So moved. Second. Been moved and properly seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, agenda adoption, I think we have one thing that uh, uh, our superintendent wishes to add to the agenda. Yes, sir, it's actually two, two things. Oh, okay. um, Action item G21, uh, we will include that. That was pulled uh, maybe a month a month ago. It has already been vetted. It's the intent to sell the Blunt High School property. Um, so that action item will be added as G21. And also G12 is the Ingalls partnership with Alma Bryant. Uh, they're going in and partnership with Albert Bryant Welding De Department, and they will be giving um, equipment uh, to Alma Bryant worth $322,000. And after seven years, um, it will be owned by Mo Mobile County Public Schools. So those are the two actions items that will be included. Okay, is... Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I wanted to ask the superintendent of minutes at the old Blunt High School. Excuse me. Property at the old blunt. Old blunt. Yes. yes. No, we don't want to be selling anything at the new blunt. <laughs> Not the new one. No. <laughs> yeah, I thought Charles was selling. Mr. Chairman, I offer a motion that we accept the adopt the uh, the uh, agenda as amended. Second. Been moved and properly seconded to accept the agenda as amended. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any announcements? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I just want to invite the public uh, to come out on Friday at the Old Blunt School campus <laughs> for a backpack giveaway, a back to school giveaway. We have 600 book bags stuffed with uh, paper, pencils, and pens and whatnot, uh, along with the fun day of face painting, water slide, and that kind of stuff. So we invite the mobile public there, uh, come at 12 and, and let your grandchild or child get an armband. And at 2 o'clock, we'll give away the book bags, along with a health fair by the uh, Kiwanis Club will be also carried on. So it'll be uh, a day of fun and, and good time out there. It'll be uh, hot dogs, water, face painting, uh, other games, whatnot. So please come out and, and uh, get backpacks. They are free for your kids or grandkids. Thank you. Um, Mr. Strinkville? Yes, sir. Uh, I know school starts for all the kids on... Uh, August the 6th, but Mr. Threadgiller knows that we have Fondy's year-round school that has begun its registration and, and starting school real soon. It sounds like everything is on task and ready to go. Yes, sir. So we do have one school moving ahead right now. Fantastic. Uh, I have no announcements. Any reports and recognitions tonight? No, no reports and recognitions. Okay. 
citizen's request. We have some folks who have asked to speak before the board. A reminder that you have within five minutes to make your presentation and the good name and character of an individual may not be discussed during an open board meeting. Uh, and I need to make this announcement now too. I think that this might be helpful later on. We probably need to make it at several of the next board meetings, but delegates should register or must register by 545 uh, in the, or 15 minutes prior to the board meeting, whenever the board meeting happens to be, 15 minutes prior to the regular board meeting for that month. Uh, but at this time, we will have uh, some folks to speak to the board. First on the list is uh, Mr. Curtis Graves and Denise Reamer. Thank you. First of all, thank you for allowing us a few minutes of your time to share with you an initiative that we're doing through the City of Mobile Police Department and along with our uh, partners for Project Thrive. Uh, let me start off by saying this. A community is only as good as its weakest neighborhood or its weakest family. Project Thrive seeks to bridge the gap of trauma-informed care in the City of Mobile and Mobile County by supporting pro-social, development, and pro-academic achievement among our most valuable resource, our children. Project Thrive stands for trauma, healing, and resiliency in the wake of violent encounters. Now, you may want to may want to ask, I mean, why was Project Thrive created? Uh, Project Thrive was created, um, uh, was created to reduce victimization re-victimization and to reduce the chances of a victim of a crime from becoming a perpetrator of a crime uh, no matter the age of the victim and I think you all that probably resonates with you I, you know I worked in the school system for a while and, and oftentimes we saw people students who uh, unfortunately made decisions that did not weigh in their favor because of being a victim of a crime uh, our goal is to work with those families and keep that from happening uh, what is the goal of Project Thrive? Uh, the goal of Project Thrive is to create a holistic approach to servicing victims of crimes by triaging a victim's immediate and long-term needs for service, whatever they may be. How do we accomplish that? We accomplish this goal through the collective impact approach to service. We will leverage the existing resources of our partnering agencies and work closely together to ensure no victim fall between the cracks of family service. Uh, basically, we're going to not reinvent the wheel. We're not going to ask for additional funding. We're going to say, how do we leverage our existing resources as agencies of Project Thrive to be more impactful in the lives of families? Why is Project Thrive important? Well, violence is a barrier to pro-social health and pro-academic success. Pro-social health and pro-academic achievement are the ingredients to creating a thriving school system, city, and county. Uh, Project Thrive Sustainability Team. You will see, I'm going to ask the team to stand up as I call their agency. Uh, Mobile Police Department, that's me. So. <laughs> and Miosha. Um, Mobile County Public School System. Uh, Mobile County Health Department, University of South Alabama Medical Center and Behavior Science Department, uh, the Youth Center, Alta Point, Mobile Career Center, and City of Mobile, Mobile Parks and Recreations. The sustainability team. The sustainability team will be responsible for building a holistic care model capable of providing trauma-informed care with only the existing agency resources at its immediate disposal. The team will also identify the partner, will identify and partner with our for-profit and nonprofit agencies in our community providing family prevention and intervention services. In conclusion, uh, we will continue doing, if we continue doing the same thing, we will uh, get the same results. 
and our goal right now is to change the way we've been doing things uh, because to get, together we're more impactful than by ourselves. Uh, when we're by ourselves, we're operating in silos. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to conclude at this point and give it to Denise. Hi, as the lead social worker for Mobile County Public School System, I want to let you know that we have been partnering with all these agencies that stood up for quite some time. Um, and while Thrive is a new initiative, it is n it's um, an outgrowth of work that we have been cultivating for the past five years with many of our community partners like Alta Point, The Bridge, and USA. Um, School-based mental health coordination is um, endorsed by not only the State Department of Mental Health, but also the State Department of Education. And in the last five years, working with these agencies, we now have 24 therapists, um, Alta Point therapists in 40 schools. We have six bridge therapists in all 12 of our high schools. We have six doctoral psychology students who've been serving in our school system doing assessments and they're in a nationally recognized program. We also have um, hosted six child psychiatrists through a collaboration with AltaPoint and USA, and now five of those six psychiatrists have been hired. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've pretty well, uh, Mr. Graves pretty well encapsulated that for us, and I think we have a a pretty good uh, idea of that, and I, it, it's certainly something that I think this board and others uh, who are associated with public education can really get behind because this is the kind of thing that is going to make a difference or can conceivably make a difference for families, and that's the bottom line. Okay, Dr. Candace Selwyn. Good evening. I'm Dr. Candace Selwyn. I'm the Women's Mental Health and Trauma Services Coordinator at the Gulf Coast Behavioral Health and Resiliency Center. And I'm also a member of the Education Subcommittee of Project Thrive. And I'm glad to hear that you're already on board. I'd like to give you a little bit more information about some of the activities that we're interested in doing. I'm also a native of Mobile. I grew up on the Dolphin Island Parkway area and received my education through the Mobile County School System. So I understand at a deeply personal level the impact of a dedicated teacher and a quality education can have on the trajectory of a person's life. Professionally, I received my PhD from the University of South Alabama in clinical and counseling psychology. And this education affords me the understanding that kids come to us with prior experiences that greatly impact their ability to learn and their ability to succeed academically. They come to school hungry and tired and scared. They may have seen their parents assault each other. They may have had to run inside because they've heard gunshots in their neighborhood. They may have moved three times in the past three months because the mom lost her job and can't afford to pay rent. These experiences that are upsetting or frightening or overwhelming to children are what we now understand to be potentially traumatic experiences. We also understand that trauma not only impacts children's thoughts and feelings, the way they see themselves, other people in the world, but trauma also greatly impacts brain development, cognitive functioning, that child's ability to learn, and their ability to perform well in school. Children with multiple experiences of trauma are often less engaged in the classroom, perform more poorly academically, and are more likely to be suspended or expelled, and more likely to drop out even into, into their college-aged years. So understanding this, there is a national push towards creating trauma-sensitive schools where all teachers and staff understand the impact of trauma and work together to create that safe environment where all kids feel supported. Efforts towards building trauma-sensitive schools are already underway, as Ms. Reamer has started to introduce some of the services being delivered in the school system. And over the past year, the center where I work also partnered with Gilliard Elementary School to create an integrated in-house care team. In April of this year, as part of this collaboration, members of that integrated team delivered a 20-minute in-service training for all teachers at Gilliard Elementary School to provide information about the prevalence and impact of trauma on children's behavior and performance in school. Prior to this presentation, 80% of teachers reported that they had never heard of the concept of a trauma-sensitive school, although a majority of them wanted to learn more. 
We did an evaluation of this training one month later, and we found that teachers identified a greater number of warning signs for trauma exposure, were more likely to identify trauma as a potential factor in child's behavior, and were more aware of the concept of trauma-sensitive schools after as compared to before the training. The teachers responded well to this training as well as other trainings that we've conducted. They're hungry for this information and they want specific tools that they can use in their classrooms. In fact, in another evaluation of our trainings with teachers, a majority of those surveyed indicated that they supported mandated staff training regarding recognizing and responding to students' behavioral health needs. So imagine the impact we could have if all teachers in Mobile County received this type of training. We could help improve the teacher's ability to recognize and respond to children with trauma histories. And in doing so, we can improve the performance of all the schools in our system while positively impacting the lives of children for whom we're responsible. Because one of the things that we also know is that it only takes one person. One adult who shows the child, I see you, I support you, to change that child's life path. And if just one person can change the trajectory of that child's life, imagine what a whole community can do. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Linda Wilson. I'd like to say good evening to all of the uh, various commissioners from the different districts and also to our newly appointed uh, superintendent, Mr. Threadgill. Um, and noticing uh, the missing commissioners, I see that uh, uh, Mr. Battles, our commissioner for District 4, is absent tonight. I assume that he would be at Williamson High School uh, concerned more about the Lad Stadium uh, future than the future at Williamson High School. Just my opinion. I'm here tonight, my name is Linda Wilson, by the way, and I am uh, an alumnus of uh, Williamson High School. You guys know me. Uh, every time the doors open for a board meeting, uh, me, or uh, one of my counterparts, or at the podium. I'm at the podium tonight. I don't have any re uh, prepared remarks because the remarks I would have prepared would have been the same remarks I prepared three years ago at Williamson High School during a town hall meeting with various different uh, divisions from Mobile County Public System, School System along with uh, Superintendent Martha Peak. So just to revisit some of the issues that we've come to you guys so many times before in the future. Um, I just want, to, there's one question that I have about all of those issues that we've come to you before. Where are we? Where are we on the issues? You guys know the issues. I don't have prepared remarks. I don't have anything to give you tonight. You have that already. You know them as well as we do. But the essential question that I have pertaining to every one of those issues is where are we? Are we still at the question mark? Seems like we're stagnant at the question mark. We always have a series of questions when we come in here and request. We never get a response. Never. Print it by email, by phone, we don't know what you guys are doing with our requests. So we want to know where are we? That's the essential question for all of our issues. Um, paramount among our issues is uh, zoning. Um, we were promised that zoning would be corrected two, almost three years ago. When one of my alumni uh, associates brought before Mr. Mixon and Superintendent Peak in the auditorium at Williamson High School, the issue that kids right across the street from Williamson were being zoned to Callaway Smith. Mr. Mixon, along with Ms. Peak, responded that they were not aware of it. Well, we made them aware of it. And their immediate response was, well, we're gonna take care of this and we're gonna do it right away. Well, one whole school year, almost two, uh, have pa uh, has passed 
and uh, the situation has not been corrected. Guys, we want to know where are we on the issues? Same issues, nothing has changed. Where's the map? We got a list of streets that's supposed to be a zoning reorder, a rezoning proposal. A list of streets that shows the Marriott Hotel, Walmart um, community, um, neighborhood store, churches. What's that supposed to mean in a zoning plan? Where is the map? I was at a local high school other than Williamson last week, and the first thing I saw when I went into the office was a zoning map, almost the size of that projection screen over there outside the wall. Where is our zoning map? Essential question. Transportation. Now, this question comes in line in, in the line of what is your survival strategy for Williamson High School? Because it seems like if you're going to provide transportation for kids right there in the area zone for Williamson to go elsewhere, what's your survival strategy for Williamson? You're pulling kids away from the school. What's your survival strategy? What programs are you going to put in place that will attract kids from across the district to come to Williamson? I don't want to hear about cosmetology and, and barbering. That's not going to attract any kid. Sure, parents are going to try to find another school for their kids to go to if there's nothing there for those kids to take advantage of. Now, my ultimate question tonight, and I'm going to be done, is what is the survival strategy for Williamson High School? Because we don't want to wake up one morning and find that you guys have met behind closed doors like you like to do with a, and then come out in the community with a pad and a lock and tell us that we are closed for business and no longer open. That's our ultimate question. Thank you. Thank you. Renee Webb. Okay. Um, Frances Williams. Hi. Um, I've stood in this position thousands of times before, and I stood before this whole panel. And one thing that I did notice tonight was I saw you, Mr. President, um, respond back to the Thrive, but I've never saw anyone on the panel respond back to the Williamson. You were so interested and intrigued, but we want someone to be just as intrigued with our children at our school. And just as she said, our commissioner's not here, and maybe he's intrigued with something else, because last stadium is not what we voted him in for. It was Williamson. And um, I was at a school, well, a town hall meeting the other night, and I wasn't happy with some of the things because we had a meeting when we were promised a meeting, a town hall meeting, because our commissioner wouldn't address our questions we had at the last school board meeting. He told us that he would speak with us at a town hall meeting, and again, he didn't address. So who do, who do we address our concerns with? Is it the board? Because we've emailed you, you don't respond to the emails. We brought and handed out a piece of paper to everyone besides you because you're new, but never have we had a response. So who do we respond to, who responds back to us? Can you give me an answer to that today? Because I'm wondering like, what's the purpose of standing at the podium giving you my concerns if you don't seem to kill? Like right now everybody's just sitting here with this blank face and I just want, I really want to know who's to answer my questions. Who's to answer the questions of the community? Will you address that when I finish? Yes. Okay. And another thing is about the zoning. We ask for the children across the railroad track, which is from me to the superintendent, to be zoned to Williamson. But you allow them to walk from here to last stadium to catch the bus to be bused across town. Now, Mr. Mixon promised us in a meeting two, almost three years ago, right here. It wasn't at the school, it was right here, and I have it on video. 
that we're going to fix it because we wasn't aware. But now that you're aware, it still isn't fixed. You zoned us children that lived in $500,000 houses that you know that are probably in, public, in private school and not going to a public school anyway. You zoned us ran down businesses and gave us a list of streets. It was so disrespectful to think that you would think that we were smart enough, we weren't smart enough to ride and look and see what you gave us. I mean, who, who's, well, I know Mr. Mixon is over zoning, but who's over him over zoning? Because he's not doing a very good job when it comes to my school. But that's all I have to say. Okay. Historically, the way that the board has operated in the past, the board, of course, is an elected group. And part of what we do is to listen to constituents who speak before the board. Mm -hmm. That's part of what we do. Another part of it has to do with budgeting. Another part of it has to do with personnel. We approve all of those kinds of things the board does. And one of the things that has, that we had uh, that the board hopes gets done during the time that uh, people speak before the board is that, that on an issue is that that person is either referred to someone to talk to personally about it or that the superintendent and this is this superintendent's first regular board meeting but the superintendent would appoint somebody to talk with them or to get them a response or a plan as to where the school system uh, is moving on those kinds of issues. Now that's what we hope comes out of board meetings when we have people speak before the board. And there have been times in the evenings then we've had meetings, Mrs. Peak previously has assigned someone at that board meeting to follow up on that particular kind of thing, meet with the person or talk to the person on the phone, whatever it might be, and, and so that's how it has gone. So will we be assigned someone tonight because uh, school starts? Well, I understand that. And uh, the superintendent has heard exactly everything that the board has heard too. And it's, so the superintendent is, the one, see the board doesn't, the board doesn't uh, tell Mr. Mixon, for instance, uh, you know, go out there and do this because that's not what the board does. The board works through the superintendent. The superintendent runs the school system and the superintendent then tells staff members exactly what it is that he or she wants the staff members to do. I don't know that you'll necessarily get that answered this evening, but it is my hope that someone will follow up with you. If you'll stay around after the meeting, we'll set up a meeting time so okay. I can so I can meet with you. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. All right, Chair James. Thank you. I'm so sorry I was late. No, that's okay. And I that's do appreciate right. it. Let's, good evening. I just wanted to say a few things to concur with what my fellow Wisdom High School alumni had stated. But I do have a few other questions. As far as, you know, school starts in three weeks, as we all know. Uh, we just want to make sure that at Wisdom we have all the staff that we need in place. And is that, that's one of my questions. Do we have the core staff members? Do we have a math teacher? Do we have a reading teacher? Do we have an English teacher? Do we have the people that we need there? Do we have a band director? Do we have uh, instruments? We didn't have instruments last year. We didn't have a band. For the first time in 50 years, we didn't have a band. Not a performing band, not a marching band. Uh, the kids look at Wisdom High School the way you look at them. Apples don't fall from the tree. If the school board says Wisdom is a bad school and it doesn't produce, you know, good people, good quality people, that's what families believe, and it's not true. The people that graduated from Wisdom came from a community of strong, hardworking parents. A lot of them don't live in the community anymore, but we were raised in the community, and we were raised to know that education is our key to our future, and we want our school to continue to educate our kids in the manner that they need, but they cannot educate if it's not a teacher in the classroom. If you have a substitute for a whole nine months, what good is that going to school? And that's how a lot of kids feel, and that's why a lot of kids don't come to school. As far as the zoning issue, 
I have talked to Mr. Mixon on several times, on several occasions about the zoning issues at Wilson High School. I found that a lot of kids, you zone main students for Wilson for middle school, but in this, the next, when they go to high school, they zone for Murphy. How is that? My other question to the board, is Murphy gonna be a magnet school this year? We were told that plan was in the ditch, but from what I hear, y'all have hired staff members for the magnet program at Murphy. Is that, is that, is that going on? Is that, just, just give me an answer, so no. So you're telling me no. There's no magnet program going on at Murphy High School this year? Not at okay. this time, no. Not at this time, okay. But, you know, we just want our slice of the pie at Wilson High School. And we feel that for many years, we've been given less than that. We want y'all to consider us as one of the great high schools in Mobile, Alabama, which it has been. It's produced a lot of educators, doctors, lawyers, nurses, just different people from our walks around the world. And we are not a bad school. It's bad people that make, a, that make it bad. And so we need to stop that. My other thing is, I did have a question. Since y'all are public elected, you know, elected officials, if we want to do, can recalls be done on board members? If that's what the public feel needs to be done on uh, school board members, it's just a question. I, I I can't answer legal questions like that because I'm not an attorney. I don't. Okay. I, I'm, but I'm we'll sorry. find out. Okay. But that's all I want to say. Don't forget we're some high school. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the uh, folks who are here this evening to speak to the board. And we'll move on with the regular agenda. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, would you proceed, please? Yes, sir. Uh, action item G1 uh, to approve the 2009 bond amendment resolution. Mr. Chairman. Yes. And as much as these items have been vetted in a, in a uh, Commit in a board member's work session. I'd like to offer a motion to approve items one through 10. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded to approve items uh, G1 through G10. Any further discussions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Action item G11, Dr. Philip Kevin Elko for Theodore High, High School. Ask for the approval. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Move for approval under the same uh, issues that uh, Dr. Crenshaw brought up. Uh, items 11 through 20. Second. Been moved and properly seconded for items 11, for G11 through G20. Do you hear any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, moving on to the consent agenda, action item H1, Mobile County Com Commission for Pillings Middle School. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman. Uh, we omitted the um, item 21. 21. Remember we added 21? Yes, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Action item 21, the sale of old blunt. That's correct, that's right. Do. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask for the approval for that. And, and it's, it's not to say on that. The intent. Tent to sell. Right. So move. Second. Been moved and properly seconded for the property at the old <laughs> Blunt High School. That's correct. That's right. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, on to action item uh, consent agenda H1 for Mobile County Com Commission for Pillings Middle School. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Off a motion to approve action items one through 15. Consent agenda items Consent one, through one through 15. 15. Yes. Second. Then moved and properly seconded to approve consent agenda items one through 15, H1 through H15. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, on to action item I, student ex expulsion. Um, student expulsions uh, one through 11 actually the approval yes move for approval student expulsions one through 11 second. Mr. Chairman on the second I, I think it's interesting to note 
of those items one through 11, how many parents actually came out to meet with the uh, student services department about that issue? You know, I think it's just really appalling that, you know, um, they just didn't come out to meet with them to discuss uh, matters as important as student being exposed, their student and HR being exposed. You know, Dr. Crenshaw, I've been saying that for a long time and it's sad to kind of see that. It, it, it's sad. You're you're right. It really is, and and uh, you would hope that children would have, uh, whether they're in trouble or whether they're on the honor roll, that they would have the kind of um, support that they would need. It's been moved and properly seconded for items one through eleven. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Lieutenant. Action item J, information for the monthly financial statement and also the purchase orders 5,000 and over. You hear a motion? I think that's just, that's information. just information. Oh, that's information. information, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, any further item discussion? Anyone would like to discuss any of the items now that we've completed all of them? Any old business? Uh, Dr. Foster, at, um, I, would, I don't know if we, this is the right area that you want to talk about this, but I think it's time. Um, a couple years ago, me and um, Stringfellow at the national conference, we went to uh, several meetings about board meetings and times and agendas and stuff. And one of the things that I would like for us to consider as a board is moving all our board meetings to during the daytime to be more convenient for our employees to, to be here, our staff. Um, uh, would like to look at the way we do our, our board meetings, uh, get with our attorney on uh, people that speaks to the board. Since we do have a new superintendent, uh, I think it's time for us to revamp that. I'd like for this board to consider that. Also, uh, I know we have recognitions, uh, the accomplishments of our, our teachers and our students. I would also like for us to consider doing them by theater pattern at our, at our schools. Um, once a semester or twice a semester if needed. So just look at the way we do business as a board. Uh, I'd like for this board to consider those. Okay, I, I hear three, three things, three distinct things there. I think there's one that we can deal with this evening given the fact that we've discussed in particular um, the uh, time of the meetings in the past and uh, to have the opportunities to hold meetings during the uh, day, um, as does the city, and the as does the city of Mobile does, and uh, the county commissioners do as well. Uh, do I hear a motion? That's one item. Do I hear a motion uh, on that from uh, you? Yeah, I'll make that motion. All right, do I hear a second? Uh, what was the motion? I mean, what is the motion? On the uh, moving the board time, the, time, the uh, evening meetings to morning meetings. Do we have to set the time? Yeah, do we have a time? Yeah. Uh, you Mr. Harwell, do you have a time in mind? Yeah. Uh, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. I'm sorry. All right, do I hear a second? Yes, I'll second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Not only second party? that now, we know we have to get Renee to give due notice to the public and to the press in terms of the, that change. And, Correct. And we have time before the next regular board meeting uh, anyway, and most of, the, uh, most of the other meetings that we have, the special call meetings, we usually do those in the middle of the day anyhow. So, but we, uh, we would expect, of course, our, our folks uh, in, in uh, Ms. Phillips' office to make sure that that information is conveyed to all interested parties. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, do I understand then that the uh, board meeting mm -hmm. that is uh, regularly assigned for August, is that one we are planning on making the move? Is that what you're- Yes, we, with there, there, well? I think there's plenty of time between now and then in order to okay. get, you know, get out all of the uh, notices yeah. and so forth. Mr. Chairman, since we're discussing it, I think we need to look at a system or process where individuals such as the delegation from Wisdom can come in and talk with the superintendent initially. I don't know about his schedule, but if, if there be some kind of communication where the concerns can come in, anybody, 
uh, be discussed uh, prior to coming to the board meeting. And then if they're not uh, resolved, then they, again, you know, welcome to come before the board. Is uh, such a process in the uh, developmental stages or is it something you thought about, Mr. Superintendent? Uh, yes, sir. I think we should uh, look at changing the policy uh, for delegations. Uh, of course, we, once we have that policy uh, vetted from different entities, then we have to table it for 30 days uh, before we can ap actually implement it. So I can draft something up. Well, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't affect the next board meeting anyway. It no, would have no, to it be, wouldn't. It, no. it would be beyond that time. Right. But I think that's important, Mr. Uh, Threadgill, like the ladies that came tonight for Williamson, they would have an opportunity to ask questions that we not we can't necessarily answer right here at the board table. But if we can uh, answer some of those questions or alleviate some of those issues. Yes, yeah, certainly we can put in their procedures that they would have to meet with someone at the central office and that, that way um, Maybe we, the can, we, can, we can answer some of those questions that they're asking tonight. Because, you know, going back to what Dr. Foster say, you know, uh, some years ago when the board was melded into the the day-to-day uh, -day operations of the system, the Southern Association of Schools and Colleges with the SACs came down and put them on probation or sanctioned them, and somebody that was here before I, That's I correct. could tell you, which is a very serious uh, uh, type of status, and we definitely want to get into that. So uh, we want to make sure that the system have an opportunity to get with the superintendent to discuss those matters without us uh, interfering in the day-to-day -day operation because we pretty much, our responsibility is to set approved policies, uh, procedures, and hire and fire employees upon the recommendation of the superintendent. So uh, we just want to keep that in mind. I totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we still have that before um, the board at this time about changing the time and so forth. I don't to, believe to, we to, didn't to, vote on that, did we? No, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's been moved and properly seconded and discussed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I think the other things uh, that uh, I heard you say, Mr. Harwell, are not things that um, we would necessarily vote on as a board at this given point in time, and I think the superintendent has made a note of those things and that um, he will look at doing it, uh, some options with regard to those things as well. And in addition to that, as we have mentioned before, uh, he will get with the board too to discuss the way in which the agenda uh, is comprised, if there are any ways in which the, we can shorten the agendas or whatever it might be. For the next board meeting then, uh, at least for the next board meeting anyway, we will have uh, the same format with people coming before the board and speaking to the board at that point. Perhaps before we have the September regular board meeting, uh, we'll have in place a policy in which uh, the folks can come and meet with the superintendent or his designee uh, to ask questions depending upon what, uh, and, and we'll announce that and make sure that everybody is aware of that and what the protocol will be and how to go about doing it. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, one item yes. that I see is pertinent to that situation is making sure that uh, citizens' uh, requests and telephone calls uh, are responded to, you know, in terms of setting an appointment. Right. Again, that will take you informing the staff right, to keep that log and, and get them in here and get them out of here because one of the worst things we want to happen is that uh, the, it be, get bogged down and, uh, you know, it may even take you setting a, a certain day out the week to hear nothing but those concerns and act on them. But uh, again, I think the process and procedure is important. All right. Okay. Then the superintendent will come to us with uh, recommendations with regard to those things. Um, uh, board superintendent request. I think there's been several of them just since we've been discussing this. I, I have one, any others? Yeah, I have one other. Uh, we understand that the superintendent is uh, naming uh, new staff persons due to to uh, retirement and whatnot. And uh, I understand that we have a uh, Dr. Lakeisha uh, Brackens, our chief. Now help me with this now. Chief academic officer. Wrong. Okay. Well, what is it? Deputy of superintendent. Deputy of Academics, okay. Superintendent of Academics. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to hear her introduce herself, tell us where she's from, and a um, little bit about us.
Good evening. As Dr. Crenshaw said, I am Dr. Lakeisha Brackens. I am a 22-year um, educator. I come with the experience of a teacher, an elementary principal for 10 years. I have experience as a superintendent, interim superintendent, as well as director of curriculum and instruction for several years. I, um, again, I um, stand on the vision of Mr. Threadgill to do the best things that we can do for the students every day of Mobile County Public Schools. I've been here for um, two weeks and I can say within those two weeks I've gotten to know a lot of people. I um, have become very acquainted with the staff here in um, academic affairs. I look forward to joining this journey with you all as we do what is best for the students of Mobile County Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you. I also understand that there has been the hiring of a uh, Chief, op Chief Operation, Operational Officer? Deputy of Operations, yes, sir. What is it? Deputy, Deputy of, of Operations, operations. Deputy Keith Langford. Operation. Yeah, so when, you, when he comes on board, would you allow him also to come to Absolutely. the Absolutely, he'll, he'll uh, start August the 6th. August 6th, yes. okay. That was all my concern. Nice to meet you, Dr. Brackens. And thank you, uh, Dr. Brackens, for just being right there whenever, you know, just jump right up there. We're glad to have you. Okay, uh, any other <coughs> board superintendent request? Uh, uh, Dr. Foster, before we yes. go further, do you mind, uh, I know Mr. Gatewood's here. Can you come on in for a second, Mr. Gatewood? Just want to let uh, Mr. Gatewood update the board on our meeting. Um, that the that state, the yes. Was that Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. And uh, he's, he's followed up with a letter and got some response, so I wanted him to Take just a second if you okay. don't mind respond back to Well, good evening. This was unexpected, but I'll, I'll do the best I can <laughs> as quickly as I can. Uh, uh, I had the pleasure of, of accompanying Mr. Harwell uh, last Thursday to speak to the uh, Alabama Safe uh, Commissions, the Governor's Safe Council, I'm sorry, the Governor's Safe Council, which is a, a council that was formed after some of the recent school shootings and things throughout the country uh, to figure out some ideas and, and to, uh, the council makes recommendations to the Governor to uh, help better secure uh, or their ideas to help better secure uh, this and, and look out for the safety of the students and staffs of all, all schools. Um, one of my, uh, well, my reason for going, uh, it, it, as you may know, the, in the recent past, uh, the council has recommended to the governor uh, who in, in turn uh, made an executive order to um, basically for school systems who don't have what they consider uh, school resource officers, which are generally law enforcement officers, uh, on staff, um, that they can install some biometric safes in offices and, and have uh, access to firearms if an incident did occur. Uh, my argument is, and if um, uh, some of the things that I presented to the Safe Council was the fact that my, my staff, my 12 resource officers have a combined total of 143 years of law enforcement experience, 198 years experience as school resource officers um, with, with this system. And so if that's the case, uh, it, to me it makes just as much sense or a lot more sense to allow my staff to be armed as we were for 30 years prior to 2007 um, instead, you know, in, in, instead of this idea that she has this uh, century program for Mobile County Public School System. So it was well received. They were attentive. I thought uh, Mr. Harwell agreed. I have had some follow-up conversation. I, uh, Mr. Threadgill and I were both here Friday, and uh, I showed him an email. Um, Dr. Mackey, the state superintendent, was, was kind of in charge of the safe council meeting. And uh, so I uh, followed up with an email to him uh, about the, our plans and, and our argument. Um, and haven't heard back from him, but I did talk to, had an occasion to talk to Dr. Lewis today, Dr. Marilyn Lewis, who was also on the Safe Council. And she gave me some very positive feedback about some conversation that was had after I left. I had seven minutes to do my presentation, so it's kind of hard to make the sale in seven minutes, but uh, I did the best I could. So um, I, according to Dr. Lewis, Dr. Mackey will be contacting Mr. Threadgill soon and talk about options and, and, and how kind of basically, I guess, where we go from here. Um, so hopefully that conversation will happen very soon. Is, so. go ahead, sir. is this, this current state policy uh, about arming um, resource officers, they pretty much have left it up to the system or is that off the books now? What, what's uh, no, the sir. Books? Uh, it's my understanding uh, prior to 2007, again, we, we carried firearms. There was an incident that happened. Uh, in the north part of the state where a, a security officer was involved in some kind of incident uh, using a firearm. And from that point forward, the state school board said 
there's a law on the books, and this law goes way back, um, that just was not enforced, that said that any, any school system employee is prohibited from carrying a firearm on campus. Yeah. They then uh, enforced that law in Mobile County. There was a law that was, that was enacted in uh, 2012, I believe, uh, that was really meant to help us, but they put some language in the law that really did more to, to, to hurt than, than good. There was there's a specific law in that says that um, every person, uh, that, that the school system can hire security personnel if they are a certified A post uh, Alabama Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission officer. Um, and if you've been out of law enforcement for 10 years or more, which most of my guys have, I try to tell folks this is a, you know, a long-term job and we don't have much turnover, then you would have to go back through an entire police academy just to get those credentials again. Uh, even though we qualified and, and uh, um, required a higher level of qualification than most police departments, and I, I presented all that to the council, and, and again, they were very receptive, so I'm, I'm positive about the outcome. You know, I, I was one uh, strong advocate against uh, resource officers and carrying weapons on campus. Yes, sir. Uh, but s the recent tragedy is on those campuses, and, and I'm not even sure the impact that it will have if those resource officers uh, are not armed. However, I think you got one resource officer for about what, 10 schools? Uh, or, average, yes, sir. So uh, the question in my mind comes into, you know, unless they're there at the, camp at the campus when the incident happens, a gun is not going to do them any good. However, um, it, and we talked about this, I think, in board meeting about how could we possibly have a resource officer for every uh, school, which you're talking about, what, 87, 90 schools, which is 77. 77 schools, which is a tremendous cost. But uh, I think some of the other uh, items you put in place to offset uh, a school tragedy of that nature, and hopefully we would not, uh, we would not have a situation like that. But I well, think it's good. I'm, I'm hopeful that the uh, superintendent will soon make a recommendation where we can increase at least a beginning of the number of resource officers, Mr. Threadgill. I think that needs to happen as quickly as we can. And Mr. Gatewood, did I understand that that little clause allows without passing another law that we could we could arm our resource officers, or is it a law going to have to be passed by uh, the state? That, the, that particular law is going to have to be amended, or there's going to have to be an action by the local delegation, is my understanding, um, to, to basically include Mobile County, um, if I'm understanding correctly. And then passed by the legislature? That, uh, yes, sir, that's my understanding. They're actually saying that, um, that the, sh the sheriff can deputize the resource officers, but that creates other problems. Well, right, and, and, and Sheriff Cochran agreed to do that back in 2007 when this all first happened, but at that time, the current state superintendent said, I don't care what kind of special deputy you are, if you are paid by the Mobile County Public School System, you will not carry a firearm. So it didn't, so it really was, it was defeated the purpose for us to go through that process. So we have to go through our delegation and then go before the legislature when they meet again in order for this process to move forward. Is that what I understand? That, that's my understanding, yes. Well, there, there's another thing. The, the, the governor can make an executive order, and that's that's the route we're trying to go, that she amends the executive order to add that our okay. our qualified resource officers right. are not just, there's a there's a, a, a catch in there about administrative degree, and, and if that wasn't in that particular executive order, then our resource officers could uh, carry the web so that's something we're looking at and, and well, hopefully I, that the, the governor I hope it ha I hope it happens soon because we're getting ready to start another school year yes sir and then another year and another year another year and yes sir we're, so, we're, uh, we're, we're working hard toward it well yes, I know sir. it's not you I'd like that but uh, I certainly hope our superintendent looks at uh, possibility of doing his part and also getting that rectified so that at least we can begin the process with the, with the Alice training and all of that to secure our schools as best we can. Sure, Mr. Threadgill has been very supportive toward that toward that outcome. Yes, I appreciate sir. Thank that. you. Also, uh, Doc, just so we could, uh, I, I saw David. I think David left, but I just want our board to know that along with Mr. Gatewood and and all our staff are are working on a project to get one of our schools to a safe school atmosphere that that's really come a long ways with the lighting and some other stuff, and it's a pilot study and all. I appreciate all y'all working on that. And I, I saw David, he walked out, but uh, they, they've come together as, a, as, a, as a, our school administrators and, and um, all our staff here working together to make um, some things that we already have in place more active. 
And uh, Mr. Gate was behind that up. My, I just wanted to take a minute to appreciate what you're appreciate doing. Appreciate that, Mr. Gate. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, uh, Attorney Client. I, I sent the board an email earlier today regarding the proposed Mr. Chairman. Yes. Move for uh, approval of the attorney's recommendation in this case. Second. Been moved and properly seconded uh, for the attorney's recommendation and the um, personnel matter that he provided us today. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Scheduling of meetings. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, I have uh, August uh, 20th for our regular board meeting and August the 15th for our work, work session. Work session will be at 12. Um, August 20th, if we're going to do the 10 o'clock, we'll be at 10. We also have an employee hearing scheduled for Wednesday. But it's, two orders, yeah. two of them with one order and one with a third. That's this Wednesday. Okay, will you update us? Uh, I mean, or get Sharon to update us when yes, any others are added? One of the three are. are. Oh, another one is going to be on. There's two of them that are definitely going to take place. And you said they were later like on. You're talking about these down the road a little bit. And maybe the following Wednesday or the Wednesday after that or something, the other hearings? No, well, we, had, uh, we, had, we had a few steps on this Wednesday. We kind of got it. No, no, no. I'm, I know what we're doing this Wednesday. I'm saying that we, okay. And you uh, anticipate them lasting how many, how many minutes? Uh, Mr. Uh, Hack is. Uh, if you want me there, you need. To. <laughs> I think I think Mr. Hack has communicated to the attorneys uh, our, our desire to have uh, to be brief and be yeah. And I will reiterate that. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I think that's it. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? What are you looking at? So move. <laughs> And Mooton probably seconded for German. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.